Everyone thinks of America as a land of cars, highways, and traffic jams, but trains, does America have them? Yes. But do you really know what types of railways are quietly changing the way Americans travel? These trains are not just a means of transportation, but also a solution to a series of traffic problems that cars cannot handle. So how do they work differently? And why are they so much more important than people think? Let's go. We'll take a look at the most important and familiar types of transportation in major cities. Heavy rail. Heavy rail is the most important form of public transport in major U.S. cities. With the ability to transport millions of passengers every day on rail lines, completely separate from road traffic. A typical example is the New York City subway system with a network of 472 stations and a total length of about 380 kilometers, serving an average of more than 5.5 million passengers per day. This is the largest subway system in the U.S. and one of the busiest systems in the world. In Chicago, the L system has about 145 kilometers of track with 145 stations, serving an average of about 730,000 passengers per day. This system is notable for its elevated rail sections connecting large areas of the city quickly and conveniently. Washington, D.C. owns a metro system with 91 stations and a total length of about 189 kilometer, transporting about 600,000 passengers daily. The D.C. metro is famous for its high efficiency and modern maintenance system and is an important bridge between the suburbs and the capital city center. The biggest strength of heavy rail lies in operating on separate tracks, not interrupted by road traffic, helping trains maintain an average speed of 30 to 50 kilometers per hour in urban areas and a frequency of up to 30, 40 trips per hour during rush hour. This significantly reduces the delays and congestion often encountered on crowded streets. However, building and maintaining a heavy rail system is very expensive with an average cost of 200 million to 1 billion USD per kilometer of new track built in major cities in the US. Therefore, heavy rail is often only developed in areas with very high population density and transportation demand to ensure economic efficiency and long-term operation. Light rail. In the U.S., light rail systems are increasingly popular in many medium and small cities as well as suburban areas. It has high flexibility in moving on both separate tracks and shared streets with other vehicles. For example, Portland, Oregon owns a light rail system called TriMet Max with a total length of about 97 kilometers and 97 stations, serving more than 130,000 passengers per day. This system is a typical model for combining separate track and street operation, increasing convenience and reducing construction costs. Houston, Texas also has a rapidly expanding light rail system with a total length of about 42 kilometers and 39 stations serving more than 60,000 passengers per day. This system plays an important role in reducing road traffic and promoting the development of new urban areas. Denver, Colorado has a light rail RTD system with a length of about 120 kilometers spread over many different lines, serving nearly 90,000 passengers per day, becoming an important means of transportation for the Denver metropolitan area and surrounding areas. Light rail has an average speed of about 20-35 kilometers per hour, lower than heavy rail but suitable for routes with moderate population density and average travel distance. The construction of a light rail system averages between 30 and 100 million USD per kilometer much lower than heavy rail, allowing cities to expand their networks quickly and flexibly to meet increasing demand. In addition, thanks to its ability to operate flexibly on the streets, light rail also helps cities restructure urban spaces, reduce congestion, and support the development of commercial and residential areas along the route. And before we move on to the type of service that specializes in serving longer distances commuter rail, and remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss important information about the world of trains. Commuter rail. Commuter rail is a type of passenger train that primarily serves long routes from the suburbs to the city center, helping workers travel daily with reasonable time and cost. This system is popular in large urban areas with transportation networks extending to large suburban areas. A typical example is Metra in Chicago, one of the largest commuter rail systems in the United States, with a total length of more than 100 kilometers and serving about 300,000 passengers per workday. Metra connects downtown Chicago with the surrounding suburbs, significantly reducing road traffic. In the San Francisco Bay Area, Caltrain is a prominent commuter rail line with a length of about 120 kilometers connecting San Francisco with San Jose and the southern suburbs. The system carries about 65,000 passengers a day and is expected to be upgraded with environmentally friendly electric trains in the coming years. 
In the Northeast, New York's Long Island Railroad is the largest commuter rail system in North America with more than 1,000 kilometers of track and more than 700 trains a day serving about 300,000 passengers traveling from the Long Island suburbs into Manhattan. Commuter rail trains typically travel at an average speed of 50 to 90 kilometers per hour with fewer stops than metro or light rail systems to shorten travel times. The cost of building a commuter rail system ranges from $30 million to $80 million per kilometers depending on the geographic conditions and the complexity of the project. A major challenge for commuter rail is the sharing of tracks with freight trains, which requires very precise scheduling and close coordination to avoid conflicts and delays. However, commuter rail remains the first choice for long journeys in large urban areas bringing high economic and environmental efficiency. Hybrid Rail Hybrid rail is a type of rail transport that combines commuter rail and light rail with flexible operation characteristics using lighter trains and often operating on existing rail lines. This is a suitable solution for areas with low population density or diverse travel needs that traditional commuter rail systems cannot fully meet. A typical example is Coaster in San Diego, California. Coaster runs on a 69-kilometer stretch along the coast connecting downtown San Diego with the northern suburbs. The system serves about 4,000 passengers per day and is especially popular with commuters for work or weekend leisure trips. Hybrid rail trains typically operate at an average speed of 65 to 110 kilometers per hour, faster than light rail but slower than traditional commuter rail systems. The use of light trains reduces operating costs and increases flexibility in adjusting trip frequencies in line with daily or seasonal traffic demand fluctuations. Hybrid rail construction costs are lower than traditional commuter rail, ranging from 15 to 40 million USD per kilometer depending on terrain conditions and existing infrastructure. This allows small cities or suburbs to deploy an effective rail transport system without too much investment. In addition to Coaster, several other hybrid rail systems have also been developed in the U.S., such as Sprinter in North County, San Diego, with a length of 52 kilometers serving about 3,000 passengers per day, and Mark Train in Maryland serving the Washington, D.C. capital area with a network of more than 120 kilometers. Hybrid rail contributes to the expansion of the rail transport network, creating a seamless connection between metro commuter rail and light rail systems, while improving the travel experience for passengers in suburban areas. Streetcar Rail Streetcar or street tram is a public transport system that runs on urban routes, often sharing street space with cars and other vehicles. This is a traditional form of transport but is still very popular and plays an important role in the development and restructuring of downtown areas. Cities such as New Orleans, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, and Kansas City still maintain and develop streetcar systems to serve the needs of short-distance travel and create friendly, convenient urban areas for pedestrians. For example, Portland's streetcar system consists of two main lines, a total of about 17 kilometer long, carrying more than 4 million passengers per year. Meanwhile, the streetcar system in New Orleans is famous for its network of about 24 kilometers long, serving about 3 million passengers per year not only as a means of transportation, but also as a unique cultural tourist destination. Streetcars typically operate at an average speed of 15-25 km per hour, much slower than light rail or metro systems, as they frequently stop and have to share lanes with other vehicles. However, streetcars have lower construction and operating costs ranging from 10 to 25 million USD per kilometers, making them suitable for central areas that need to develop public transport but have limited budgets. In addition, streetcars also play an important role in promoting urban development, increasing real estate values around the routes and creating vibrant public spaces, helping cities improve their quality of life and reduce dependence on private cars. Although not an option for long or fast trips, streetcars are an effective tool for short trips in central areas, contributing to the revitalization of historic urban areas and promoting sustainable development. High-speed rail Although many countries in the world have modern high-speed rail networks, the United States has yet to have a true high-speed rail line in operation. However, this is the biggest dream of the American railway industry, a vision that everyone hopes for but no one knows when it will come true. And since that's what millions of Americans are hoping for, let's take a look at the high-speed rail picture to understand why it's so important. High-speed rail is a rail system that operates at very high speeds, typically 200 miles per hour or more, designed to connect major cities more quickly and efficiently than traditional means of transport, such as cars or planes over medium distances. In the U.S., the most prominent project currently is the California High-Speed Rail, which is expected to become the first large high-speed rail line in the country, connecting the 
the two cities of San Francisco and Los Angeles with a projected top speed of about 220 miles per hour. This project aims to shorten travel time from more than six hours by car to about two hours, 40 minutes, while also reducing the load on crowded highways and airports. The California high-speed rail is expected to be about 517 miles long, divided into several construction phases with a total estimated cost of up to $80 billion. Although the project is facing some financial and technical difficulties, it is still considered an important step forward in modernizing rail transportation in the U.S. Outside of California, the Texas Central Railway project is being developed to connect Dallas and Houston about 240 miles long, expected to operate Shinkansen bullet trains modeled from Japan at speeds 186 miles per hour, shortening travel time to about 90 minutes compared to nearly four hours by car. In the Northeast, the Northeast Corridor NEC is the largest passenger rail line in the U.S., connecting Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. Although not a full-fledged bullet train, the NEC is being upgraded to improve operating speeds up to 125 miles per hour, with Amtrak Acela Express trains serving more than 3 million passengers a year. Around the world, high-speed rail systems such as the Shing Kansen in Japan, the TGV in France, and the CRH in China have clearly demonstrated economic and social benefits, enhancing regional development, promoting trade, reducing traffic congestion, and environmental pollution. However, in the U.S., the development of high-speed trains faces many major challenges such as huge investment costs, high technical requirements, long-term planning, and coordination between levels of government. However, many experts believe that high-speed trains will be an indispensable part of the sustainable transportation future of the U.S., especially in the context of population growth and increasing travel needs. Okay, that's the end of today's video. Thank you for joining me today. See ya!